All right, guys. So I'm here with Josh Lewis, uh, owner of Grind Time Fitness. This is Grind Time Fitness, right? Is that your, the whole full name? Uh, it's actually Grind Time Training, but whatever. Very close, right? Sorry. Grind Time. That's fine. Yeah, no worries. So for, for people who don't know about your gym or about you in general, go ahead and just say a couple of real quick things that, so they, they know exactly what's going on. Well, uh, you know, Butch, uh, as you and I have talked before, you know, for, for me, the gym thing is kind of like a, it kind of started as, as a hobby. Um, fitness has always been something really, really important to me. I've always loved it, but I've always, I've always had another job. Um, and I've always had stuff going on over here uh, for, uh, for Channel 8 as well. So I, ha I was never able to, like, really, you know, get into it. Um, I had some time when I was younger um, to do some personal training on the side. I, and I started working at the Y, and I just thought, man, man, we'll have some fun with this. If I make any money at it, it's not about money. If I make any money, I'll buy some workout clothes with it. All right. Well, before you know that, I had a whole, I had a whole like closet full and dressers full of workout clothes. And I thought to myself, hmm, well, maybe we're out of something here. You know, maybe this could be more, more than just a hobby. So it kind of, it kind of, you know, it went in baby steps. From there, I started working with uh, a football, the football team at GW High School. Then I worked with their baseball team. And then I had a key to their facility. So I started teaching classes in the morning when nobody else was there and this and that. And one thing led to another. And before you know it, I was like, well, let me just see if I can't just start my own gym. Yeah. No idea what I was getting into, no clue, and, uh, and, we, and all I knew is that I loved this stuff, and, and I was going to find a way to make it happen, and, uh, you know, here we are. Well, and, that, and that's actually a cool story, because that's literally the exact same thing that happened to me. I mean, you, we, we met probably, what, 2000-ish, 2002, three, you know, something like, maybe like 2003, when you sent me that Hoist Gracie uh, thing from back in the day. I want to say maybe that was like 2004, 2005 yeah, was, or something. It was a while. Definitely was a while way back. back there, but... But it, and the point of saying that is, if you remember, I was sharing a, a gym with, you know, some basic puzzle mats that you could probably buy at a Home Depot or, you know, I mean, I was the same thing. It was, and it was, it was just exactly the same. Like I had started training with the two, three guys because I didn't have, it was same, like I came to West Virginia. I was like, well, I want to do jujitsu and I want to do MMA and I want to do this. Well, and there was none. So then I grabbed a couple of guys. We started in my basement. It kept growing. I was like, well, now we need a gym. So we chipped in and it became a gym. And. So I think that probably we have a very similar story, meaning that I'm not a businessman. I'm a, I just have a passion. And then I got to figure that stuff out on the side, right? Which is pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. You don't realize it when you're going through it. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. Oh, I didn't sign up for this, man. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to do some squats. You know, yeah, I'm trying to exactly. show people how to, how to get good depth on their front squat. I'm not trying to think about like balancing all these, you know, different ledgers and money and whatnot, but. You know, you adapt and you learn on the fly. You go with it. Yeah, and I think the unfortunate part that probably you and I have both learned is if you don't run it like a business, it will not function as a business. Therefore, it will not last. Meaning, you know, people need to pay the bills. They need to you need a market because you need people to come in the door. I mean, it literally has to be a business. You can't just open your doors and just kind of half-ass it. You just can't. Because I have, I failed a lot. Um, and, and now I've, I've been around for a while and, and you've been around for a while. So you, you've done... And I will say that you're a lot smarter than me because I've failed way more times than, than you have for sure. Dude, listen, you, you can't, you're selling yourself short, man, because you've been in, how long, when did you first, you first started? Like, uh, for yeah, real, for real? probably right on, right at 2000. So we're looking at 20, 21 years now. Dude, you've been in the game for two decades, man. So you, you're, yeah, was, whatever you're, whatever you're doing, man, you're, you, you know, I need to, I need to take some lessons from you. You know what I mean? What, yeah, no, I appreciate that. But I do know that along the way, there's, Tons of things that I failed. And, um, you know, the other thing for me, though, I was so young when I started, right? So, unfortunately, I think when you're young, somebody gives, I, I, get, I get so much good advice from a lot of people that, that were successful that I didn't take any of it because I thought, I'll just reinvent the wheel. And then you find out, like, through trial and error. For me, I, I think I learned more when I fail. Um, but, you know, ultimately, I just, all the advice I was given right with the go is what I do now, which is sad. It just took like five or 10 years before I figured it out, you know, and that's why I say I give you credit. I mean, I've seen your place evolve just like that. I've seen you move uh, facilities um, to where you're at now. And I haven't been there physically, but I see the pictures and I, of course, know Angie. I don't know if Angie's still there, um, but I saw the pictures and all the, and it's in, well, we're, you're sitting there now, right? That's, that's beautiful. I've never had anything look like that. Well, I, you know. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm, it's it cost, whew, another one of those things, man. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's an under, it's been an undertaking, and and I, I I probably not probably I definitely bit off more than I probably should. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope probably not more than I can chew. I'm I'm, I'm chewing this 
as fast and as hard as I can to try and to try yeah. to make it happen. But um, you know, it's just been it's just been one of those those things that we just gotta kind of roll with. You mentioned failures before, but I don't think those are failures, Butch. That's just that's just a life lesson because they're not failures because you learn you learn from those failures. Mm -hmm. and and you didn't and you didn't make those same mistakes again so like you know you just learn lessons from that stuff you know what i mean and, and i've learned many many lessons um right along in the, in the same way as you have yeah no that's true and i, th I think part of what we do is is uh really just enduring right because you're going to take some knocks when you first start because i think part of all this stuff is branding right so at some point just like both of us want this but at some point you want to look when somebody says i want to work out they want to say well have you tried grind time you know where that's at like that's what the next statement needs to come out of people's eyes. So, or out of their mouth. So, I mean, like, I don't know how long it takes, right? It takes a while. I mean, I've been at, in my situation, I've been at bars where, you know, people are like, I do MMA. And, and I'm like, well, where do you train? I'll say, I train at Butch Howell's place. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll be like, you know, at first I used to bust them out. So, well, that's, that's me. I've never seen you. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but now I'm like, I don't because I wasn't doing it really to be mean. I, I, maybe I kind of was, but, um, but now I was like, no, that's cool. Like, I like that they say that if I really think about it, because that means I've branded my things correctly. Right. And so now I'd be like, well, maybe I just haven't seen you. Right. <laughs> or something, you know? Yeah. And then they'll be like, oh yeah. And then even that little conversation, maybe after having it, and this is kind of what we talked about too, is one thing about our job is people need to like us. They really do. Um, you're your business. I mean, it is like, you might say grind time training, but that, that's one of the reasons why you know, I, mine used to be called Vance BKJ for, for boxing, kickboxing, jujitsu. But I ended up putting my name on the door because I was like, you know, honestly, like when somebody wants to take a lesson or something, they need to know who they're taking it from. And, and that wasn't my idea. Like my coach, well, Hoist Gracie and all the, that's what they do. Like there's Hoist Gracie jujitsu. They're like, why don't you just call it after you? And at first I, I just, you know, I was like, well, I'm not, I don't want, for even you don't want to come across as being like an egomaniac basically yeah and, and the, yeah and then you're you're taking all the heart the knocks as well as the good stuff right so now when they like instead of saying my gym sucks it's well butch house sucks right like, you, you're gonna have to be able to take that which i do <laughs> you know it's like you know and, and uh yeah exactly you're exactly right i don't want to come across that but at the same time i think it was better for me because now you know it, it did the brand thing i wanted it to do i, I think maybe not I, i'm still learning too Branding is huge, man. That is, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and, and I think that, you know, like everything in life, it goes, you know, there are different variables, mm -hmm. you know, different, different things make some things go faster, make some things go slower. But to me, I think that consistency is just, is just the key. You just, I mean, I, and I equate a lot of things to working out, you know, you're not going to have, not every single day is going to be a 10 out of 10 workout. You know, you're not going to yeah. have eight plus workouts. I don't care. The, the, the most badass dude in the world isn't going to have, you know, 10 out of 10 workouts every single time he works out. He's gonna have a good workout. He's gonna have some bad workouts along the way. But guess what? He keeps doing. He keeps getting up every freaking morning and he keeps going back and he keeps going back and he keeps going back. You know what I mean? So consistency is the key. And I think that a lot of that with business right now, dude, we're, you know, some people are up against it with business, you know, Absolutely. and, um, and it's terrible. And we're one of them and we are struggling right now. And yeah. sometimes you feel like, it's, it, it can be an overwhelming feeling. Like you feel like you're suffocating or you feel like you're drowning. Mm -hmm. So I find myself constantly having these conversations with myself, like, dude, just keep chopping wood. Like you're out in the middle of the woods, right? And you want this big ass tree to fall. So you take a swing at it. You take one swing, nothing happens to that tree. All right. You take another swing at it. Nothing happens to that tree. You know what I mean? Like you think like, what am I doing here? Why am I, why am I keep, why, why do I keep swinging at this tree? That's not doing anything. Well, guess what? The only way to assure that that tree is not going to fall is to just stop chopping at it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but if you keep chopping at that tree every single day, at some point, at some point that tree is going to fall, you know, if yeah. you're giving your best effort, you're really, really trying to, to, to get that tree to come down. You're going to get that tree to come down. It just might take a while, you know? So I think that consistency is a huge part of it. Well, it is, and it's a big part of working out, and it's hard, I think, as a coach to get that across to other people, right, is, is what you're saying. So, I mean, honestly, that was a good speech. Remind me of my football coach in high school. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, and I mean that in a good way. That's good because ultimately that's what we're looking at. Like, when anybody signs up to a gym, we are a coach, right? And it's like that's all they need. They just need to remind it. And so one of the things that we were talking about really before we got on here too, right, is um, – the amount of energy it takes to be to to be at this level right we're meaning that just the amount of energy and passion for one thing you are passionate right so that helps yeah 
thing that you say and everything that you do. Yep. But not you every day, have. like you said, working out though, like not every day are you up. So a couple of things, and, and this is what, again, we were talking about before we got on here, but what are your, I think you're naturally a little higher level, but you are busy for, for meaning that you are, like people don't know how much newscaster work. That's the one thing we need to bring up is that you're almost at station all the time, right? Things change. You're always getting ready for stuff, especially in West Virginia. It's a little, I think there's only a couple new state. I mean, you guys are slammed, right? Yep. So by the time you do that and then, then you leave and then you got to go to the gym and you got to work out and you got, you, you have, to, if, if you walk in and say, I'm tired and I'm miserable, nobody's going to want to come to your gym either. Right. So you can't, when, would you want to go to a, to, a, to a gym or whoever's teaching or coaching or, or owns a place is, is walking with, with bags in their eyes and is sleepy and, and yeah. it isn't, it isn't, it doesn't look like he's happy to be there. If, if that person's not happy to be there, not excited to be there, why, why are you walking through that door and, and, and coming to this class? Mm -hmm. That's not your responsibility to bring energy in. You know what I mean? It's their yes. responsibility. They're responsible yeah. for giving you that energy to kind of get you through it. I agree. Well, you, and you clearly practice what you preach. So how, how do you get at that energy level? I mean, is it because you're eating right? Because you're working out every day, which are two things that we know are going to increase your energy level. Do you find that's one of the main keys that, that's going on there? Um, I, I, I just, man, taking care it's of yourself. A tough, it's a tough answer. It's hard right? though. It's hard. Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes, you know, it, it just becomes a mindset, you know what I mean? Like, and you just have to, and you just have to, um, I think for me, if I don't get up early enough before class, you know, like it takes a while for anybody to wake up. Right. So yeah. I, I need to make sure that I'm getting up. I, I set my alarm. Up. If I have to get up early in the morning, I try to set it for at least an hour before class, sometimes an hour and a half. So I can, mm -hmm. I can get the cobwebs out and, and, and eat something quick and, and, you know, kind of, be balanced and be at that baseline level where I need to be versus, all right, well, I got a class at eight o'clock. I'm going to wake up at 7:45. I'm going to brush my teeth or maybe I'm not going to brush my teeth and I'm going to roll out. And I'm going to go do this. Well, that's going to come across, you know, people are yeah. going to see that versus if I got up earlier, you know, in the day and I was, I was prepared for it and this and that. So, you know, I, I think that you just have to, you have to have that mindset that, you know, you're just going to, you just have to do it. Now, sometimes man, um, this building that I bought, uh, we had to renovate it. You and I were talking about this, but we had to renovate this building. So I have a TV job that, that requires, you know, full time, 40 hours plus a week. I got a, a six year old kid requires time. Um, if you have a relationship with somebody that, that requires time and energy and effort and, oh yeah, teaching classes, um, you know, doing the bills, trying to market your place. This, this, and, oh, and then on, on top of that all, I was having to renovate a building while all this is going on. So I would yeah. literally on the weekends, literally I would be up. And by the way, this building where I'm at is right across the street from the TV station. And you can see where I am right now. This is, this is the upstairs. It's kind of a unique setup, right? So this is the upstairs yes. of this Beautiful. warehouse that I bought. The downstairs is the gym. So the upstairs, I bought it and made it real nice. And it's, 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 my, it's my apartment. I live here. My gym is downstairs. So I can wake up in the morning if I wanted to, five minutes before a workout and just walk downstairs and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm okay. Or I can walk across the street to my work. So anyways, on the weekends, when I was renovating this place, I would go to work until 11 30 12 o'clock and i would come over here i'd walk across the street after work and i would put insulation on the walls or i would be painting yeah. the wall or and i would do that till sometimes there was one time i did it till eight o'clock in the morning and then I, I went to I took a shower went to sleep for an hour and i got up and taught a class i mean yeah tell rough. me how how do you think that class was that day you know what i mean yeah well yeah but it was rough but on the flip side though you almost hope people and, and they don't need to know your story right but because the people that showed up they need to work out but I would hope that they'd appreciate the fact that you did that all night and still showed up to teach class. Cause at the same time, you're almost showing somebody, look, this is the kind of dedication, this kind of passion I have. Right. And for I appreciate that. You're and I, and I like to think you're right too, but at some point, but I know that, know, yeah, I know at it's some right, point so. we need you to, we need you to bounce back and have that, have that energy. The reason why we came to you in the first place is because of your energy is because of this. And, that. and if you don't have that, you just yeah. lost a huge part of what, of what draws people to you or what drew, drew me to come to your place in the first place. So if you don't have that, we get that, you know, it's a long night and this and that, but if it's a long night every single night, and if this is the new normal for you, then we're probably going to go someplace else. Yes. But we do that admire the, we, we admire the, we admire the, the gusto and this and that, but you know, we still are, are paying good money here to, to come yeah. here and get, and get working, you know? It, yeah, no, and that's, and that's exactly right. It's a sad reality, right? Cause no, even though we hope that people will, they'll appreciate it for a little while, but ultimately still it's like, what have you done for me lately? It doesn't matter, right? You know, I'm and here. You can't blame. I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, I, I agree. 
That's what I say. I'm not not knocking him. I know that. I think luckily you know that. Luckily I know that 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 we have to we have to portray. We're professionals, right? We we have to do something that's a little above and beyond, and nobody cares. It's like almost like we say, like nobody cares. Keep going, right? That's kind of the new phrase everybody's doing. The T-shirt, man. Everybody's wearing those T-shirts, right? Hey, nobody cares. Get better. Right? Yes, exactly. And nobody that's cares. Be better. I don't want to hear your excuses. Be better. Yes, you know? which is great. So I, I agree. Let's yep. talk about this so the, at the gym a little bit. So <clears throat> what kind of classes do you guys have? And, and what all, on top of the classes, do you guys do any um, stuff too or no? Or, or how does do that work? like nutritional type stuff too is it an all-around thing or well first of all um health like this whole fitness thing we're doing it starts and ends in the kitchen like that's the most mm -hmm. important part and i don't try and sugarcoat that and try and tell people otherwise man if sure, yeah. it, the points in my life where i've been work I, I've, I've always worked out hard with the exception of any time i've been injured right so i can work out six seven days a week in hard workouts but if i don't have my diet going right man I'm not going to see the results that I want to see. And I'm not going to feel as good um, as I would feel as if I was dieting right and if I was taking care of my body and eating the right things. So that's number one. Um, so I always encourage people, though, to instead of like meal plans and diet plans and this and that, let's just go with like basic fundamentals. Let's go with, let's go with stuff that we can – I hate the term diet, okay? Because guess what? We all have diets. Yeah. Yeah. Some people's diets are just crappy. You know what I mean? Like, but it's a diet. So let, let's, let's get rid of that term diet and let's just think about, all right, how do we make good life decisions when it comes to food, you know, with anything in life, but in this particular instance with food, you know, I need to stay away from X, Y, and Z. I need to incorporate more of this. And you know what, if I've been pretty good, you know what, and I'm, I go by the 90, 10 rule. You've been, you, if 90% of your meals have been clean, they've been healthy. Well, guess what? You got a little breathing room with that 10% and don't feel bad about that breathing room. You know what I mean? Like, you earned it, but you got to earn it. Earn that breathing room and then enjoy it and appreciate it, but also in your mind say, all right, that's over with. All right, you, I'm not going to let that ice cream sandwich beat me twice. You know what I mean? Well, no, and that would be, that's a great point. How, how do you get past, so this is what happens to me. I would have a so-called cheat day, which is not the 10 rule. It's, it's a day, right? And it's should, supposed to be a cheat, by the way, it's supposed to be a cheat meal, not a cheat day. <laughs> I know, and, and my right? days would go from Friday to Saturday to Sunday and sometimes in <laughs> Because I would buy a sheet cake and a gallon of ice cream. I'm like, well, I can't just let it wait. <laughs> right? it's, it's, I know it's in there. I know that I love ice cream, right? And if I know yeah. ice cream is in there, it's, it's gone. It's not lasting more than two days. No way. It's yeah. You know, and, it's, so I, I, and that's the, the weird thing about diet is, like, we all know the answers, even though, you know, we act like we don't. Like, that's the thing. So I know that ultimately, like, I am overeating. I'm overindulging. I'm buying too much food, and then it's there. And, and I know the answer is to do less. But that is my, my problem with the 90 10 rule. If you give me that 10%, I'm going to abuse that 10%. It's um, unfortunately, food's my drug. It just is. So that's the part I struggle with. I can work out, do all this stuff, and then I ruin it all when I, when I you know, at some point. Um, do you well, the, fact that, the fact that you know that about yourself, that's huge right there. That's a, that's a win in itself. You know what I mean? So maybe, you, yeah. maybe, the, 90, maybe the 90 10 rule isn't for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, then, so then I would say, hey, listen, if you struggle with moderation, which, by the way, right there with you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and, yeah. and I, I also think that a lot of people who are, who are avid gym goers like you and me and, and all the people who come to your gym and come to my gym, there, there's a little bit of, of that, um, uh, what do you want? We don't really like moderation for the most part. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we are, I think a lot of us subscribe to the theory that moderation is for sissies. You know what I mean? And we don't, we don't do moderation. Moderation is yeah. weak. If we're going to do something, you know, when's a lot, do you ever go out and have a drink? No, people say, yeah. I, had a, right I had a beer for dinner. Why yeah. would I want to have a beer for dinner? You know yeah. what I mean? No, dude. No, if I'm going to have a beer, I'm probably going to have six or seven or maybe eight beers at least. Yeah. You know, or I'm not, yeah. not going to do it. You know what I mean? Because I don't really mm -hmm. do the moderation thing. You know what I mean? Um, so that's, but, that, but knowing that about yourself is huge. So now what do you do with that information? Do you just get rid of that 90-10 rule? And you just kind of like, you know, you just, just kind of throw that by the wayside and say, that's not for me. I, 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 don't, I don't have the answer to that because I think that every person's different. Well, so one of the things we talked about before we got on here too, you're doing a food journal right now. Is that kind of your answer to that? Just keeping yourself accountable because it's written right there? Can I, can I show it to you? Hold on one second. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's right. Here. So this isn't just a food journal. This is a food journal on crack, all right? So I got, I went, I went all out, all right? I made yeah. it real nice, all right? I got it all pretty up. 
this is my weekly, this is my weekly breakdown. So I've got, this is the week of whatever it was. This is, this is, let's, let's add a bad name. Let me, let me go to the one. So this is the week of September 6th through September 12th. All right, here's Sunday, yeah. Monday, Tuesday. It goes calories, carbs, sugar, fat, protein, water intake, um, energy drink in intake, because I'm trying to cut that back. Then I've got my, my workouts, strength workout, conditioning workout, how many? Um, and then how, were they light, moderate, intense, light, moderate, intense. Then I give myself weekly grades. All right, that's the weekly breakdown. But then here's the daily breakdown. I've got two sheets dedicated. This is just one day. This is a Sunday right here, September 6th. And then there's my, there's my totals right there. So I know people say, oh, you know they have apps for that, right? Yes, I'm aware. I know it's 2020, they have apps. But guess what? Yeah. Apps don't do it for me, man. Apps, yeah, they don't I, need me neither. I need to write it down. I need to write it down. If I write it down and I know that if I eat that ice cream sandwich, that's 260 calories, man. And I have to put that down. I can't not put that down. It's all the sugar. It's 28 grams of sugar. You have to write that down. Guess what? I might still do it, but there's a better chance that I'm going to say, mm, mm. No, that's, that's powerful. Because <clears throat> and there's a ton of studies, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, talk about the act of writing stuff down, right? For, for most people, makes, it helps you remember things. But too, I think if it's right in front of you, you're right. Because what, what is that? Um, not that I want to plug somebody's app, but friend something app my, my pal or something my like fitness that. pal maybe yeah that one yeah, yeah everybody uses it and i've used it too but it's so easy just like you said i can hit a button that says ice cream sandwich and i move on and i hit another button and it disappears i don't ever have to look at it right it's gone yep. um however if, if i have to write it like that big journal that you have you can't hide from it you're looking at it and you're reviewing it right and i'm sure you're trying to improve which i like that that's, that's super yeah. helpful Listen, man, like, that's good. I mean, you're really, org to me, that looks really organized. But do you, you do that more? I'm sure you don't do it just for organizational skills. Do you, you do it more for the same thing we're talking about, more for the power of seeing and accountability and maybe somebody else could look at it kind of deal? Or It's definitely for accountability purposes. And, yeah, I would, I would love, uh, and I've tried to share with other people and try to encourage other people, like, just try this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But most everybody's like, well, dude, there's an app. I can do this app. But my thing is this. Yeah. Like, with anything in life, yeah, I believe that the more you put in, the more you get out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, by me having to take, what, 10, 15 minutes every day to remember and track what I wrote and write down the times that I ate it and all these you know, macros and stuff like that, I'm putting a lot into that. So yeah. because I'm putting a lot in, I expect a return on my investment. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, almost, just like, it's almost like just positivity. Like, yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that goal. Um, I'm going to weigh 185 pounds and I'm going to be 8% body fat. I don't care that I'm 42 years old. I'm going to yeah. hit that because I'm investing that kind of time into it. I'm, I'm putting the work in. So yeah, I'm going to get the results. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's a good point. So now speaking of that too, do you, do you write down you long-term goal, short-term goals? How, how do you, do you write that? Absolutely. Right? Well, that's the law of attraction. I mean, and I think that, yeah. I think that if for people who don't write down goals, they don't set goals, they don't, they don't, write them down and put them someplace where where they're they're visible then yeah dude like you're, you're you're missing the boat here's here's one i got in my refrigerator right here this is another fitness related goal but it's like all right so i got a picture of myself and i stuck my i stuck my belly out real big in this picture to make, make myself look even worse i mean i don't look yeah. good here but i made myself yeah. look even worse than i normally do so if you can so, turn this here hold on let me, just, let me put this around real fast okay so all right so here's my choice. This is on my refrigerator. So if I go into my refrigerator to get something bad, I got the choice. You want to be this, all right? Or do you want to go back to being this guy who that's also you? That's the same person. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, no, that's pretty awesome, man. So if you want to, if listen, if you want to go and have that, uh, if you want to go and have that ice cream sandwich, uh, you go right ahead. You want to get those, uh, those golden grams out of the cupboard, you go right ahead. But guess what? You're going to be that top guy still. All right, you're not gonna yeah. be that guy in the bottom with those, with those abs popping out everywhere, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. up to you, it's your choice. And I can't get mad at anybody for me not being um, who I wanna be or who I feel like I am at the core of me, you know what I mean? Well, can, can you imagine, uh, and you've probably been there before too, I mean, all that, but I, I can't imagine if I had that picture in my refrigerator and I went on like a late night binger that I do, like, just, I'd be like, I need to crumple up this, you know what I mean? I'd feel so, awful like i'm just letting and it, obviously that's why you have it but like you're letting yourself down and yeah yeah but then but, it, but what it also does is it, it also pisses me off 
Yeah. And it pisses yeah. me off and it, it, and it motivates me. And I say, you know what, dude, you're better than this. You know what I mean? Yeah. You did not show it last night when you, when you shoved 4,000 calories um, in your mouth from nine o'clock on, but you are better than this. Guess what? Be better. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, show, I think no, you are better, but you need to show that you're better. Prove it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, no, I like that attitude. I, cause I, I was just having this talk with somebody the other day and I'm sure you know who David Goggins is and all these people. But oh, love it, that dude. But that's what we're talking about is that right there. He has an ability to tap into this anger, something that fuels him, right? When he's, he's going downhill or something's not going right, all of a sudden he'll tap into this. He'll be like, because he, I've heard him say the frame, like, you don't know who, or the, whatever. It was something like, they don't know who you are. You know, he'll keep yelling this and he'll get pissed off. And I think that's another thing about working out too, to get to the next level is you have to have some kind of motivation in there that we have to tap into. Rather, like you said, it pisses you off. When I got in my best shape of my life for you know a couple of times, there were typically things that pissed me off. Like somebody said something to me and I'd repeat that back. Like maybe maybe a, a girl or my wife or said, man, you're getting fat or something. You know, but it's usually not even that bad. It's something that really just pissed me off, right? And so then for a whole year, Anytime something I was thinking about, maybe I could do this, maybe do that, I would, I would tap into that and it would put me in another gear. Um, and I think that's important too. I, I don't know, I, like I said, David Goggins, for example, has a permanent fixture of whatever that is in his head. I don't know, he may be said in his books, but I think we all need that to another degree, right? So I, I like all that stuff too. Like what you, I mean, how could, if you went to your refrigerator and you see that picture, you're being held accountable and it's probably gonna piss you off. <laughs> it's gonna be all those things, you're gonna be like, you don't wanna be that, I wanna be this. Yeah. And, and it makes me want to do more. It's like, so I had that picture on my refrigerator first. Then I started thinking like, all right, well, that's, that's, that's helping. But how can I go next level on this? How can I take this, this picture on a refrigerator? What can I do more? That's, and that's why I came, that's where I came up with the food journal thing. And I'm like, you know what? I know a lot of people have food journals on apps and I know that there are other food journals I could probably subscribe to, but I want something that's tailored to me and yeah. something that I want to, I want to make it my own because I'm really going to, uh, I'm really going to like take to it more. And it's custom made for me. And that's, that's when, after the, 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 you know, the picture on the refrigerator is when I started doing that. And that has been, for me, I started it in September, like the beginning of September. And mm -hmm. I've seen like, just within just a, a few weeks, we're not even in October yet. And I'm already feeling more than anything, feeling like myself again, and not feeling like, um, wore out on it or like yeah. burnt out on it all. I'm feeling even more motivated because I'm seeing these little gains and I'm seeing like, Oh, dude, listen, you could, you could make this even better by subtracting this from your diet and putting this in instead, you know, like, let's make this even better. You know, yeah. how can we refine this to keep it better, you know, or do we just continue on with the path that we're on and continue to work harder with our workouts? And then you're going to see these go. And like, it just, for me, it's just really motivating. Well, it has to be. And then I, like we talked about earlier, going back to kind of full circles, all this is giving you more energy to do that. If you're eating right, you're doing those things right, you're not eating sugar, you're not having highs and lows. You got the oh, energy. You know, you absolutely. Got to do it. Um, so on that note too, though, what, what do you think? Because some people just take a food journal and they know they're eating shitty. Okay? So they take the shitty stuff out. I noticed you, you said you had sugar on there. You had some other stuff. What, else, what do you think? Are you, go, you're, are you going as detailed as when somebody says, I'm taking macros and I'm doing this? Are you into that or what? I mean. Oh, I, I'm, I, break, I break it down every, every single day. I break it down. Like, for example, I'll tell you what I've had. I'll, I'll do yesterday, for example. All right. So and I write down the times, the day and everything. So yesterday I took in 2,142 calories, 197.5 carbs of that. 20.5 grams of sugar so i did really that's that's low that's yeah. pretty good for me 20 grams of sugar 60 grams of protein and 191 i'm sorry 60 grams of fat and 191 grams of protein for me um as far as my 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 diet i gave myself a letter grade of b mm -hmm. um and truthfully that's probably better than a b but i don't want to i don't want to i want to make it harder on myself i want to be a tough grader you know what i mean so I, I'll, I'll i'll be um lower than I will be, than I will be higher. Cause I don't feel like giving myself a letter grade of an A is going to do much to motivate me. I feel like I need to have a little bit more of a care at the end. Um, but all right. So at eight forty-five yesterday morning, uh, I ate some Turkey slices. All right. Then I had eggs, uh, egg beaters with mozzarella cheese. It was 317 calories, um, 16 carbs, no sugar, six grams of fat and 50 grams of protein. You can't have a much better breakfast than that. It was awesome. It was eggs, some, some low-fat mozzarella cheese, some spinach, and some tomatoes. Like, boom. That's, 
that's a freaking super breakfast. And what it did, you talk about the energy levels, Butch. My energy was sustaining throughout the course of the day versus, yeah. you know, waking up and have something with some sugar in it. So you get that pop right away, but then, then you drop down and you're in a worse shape than you were at the beginning. Um, later on in the day, I had um, some ground turkey, like 98% fat free with broccoli and cauliflower, some mozzarella cheese. All together, I had 500 uh, calories, 18 carbs, 4 grams of sugar, 22 grams of fat, and 55 grams of protein. Like, that's a, that's a great freaking lunch, and that, that got me through for a couple more. Then I had some tenderloin, all right, which had 325 calories, 7.5 carbs, 2.5 grams of sugar, um, 50 grams of protein, and only 9 grams of fat. So, like, you know, uh, the worst thing that I had yesterday were, were uh, maybe – actually, I don't – Probably the turkey slices exactly. is the worst thing that I had, you know? Sure. But it's but all because they, of the food journal. Is it, uh, are you eating that stuff on bread or is it just turkey slices? Just turkey slices, yeah. No, I'm just breakfast. wondering because you, you say you have some carbs on it. Where are the carbs coming from? Are they coming from some, like a condiment on the side or something like that? Or Well, um, yeah, where did all these carbs come from? Because to me, it oh, sounds you know what? Like... Oh, hey, actually, you know what? They were, there weren't that many carbs. I mean, I made a mistake. Uh, I had to figure this out. So that's good, had, right? You can fix it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I had I had some carrots, right? I had some carrots, and yeah. I hadn't had baby carrots in a while. And I, you know, and I looked up the nutritional facts on them, and the Kroger website had it all wrong. It had one baby carrot. They had it with twenty five calories, six carbs, and one single baby carrot. Yeah, they're not um, big. that big, right? They're like they're like tiny, right? And yeah. I had like I had like twenty of them, and I was like, oh god, I already ate them, but I got to write it down. All right, so I wrote it down, but I thought, that's, that's kind of weird. So then later on, I went back and looked it up, and, it, and those numbers were all wrong. I looked it up in a, different, in a different place, and so I really didn't have that many carbs at all. My worst, the highest amount of carbs that I had uh, yesterday was 23.5. That was with peppercorn, tenderloin, and broccoli and cauliflower. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, I think people, myself included, they forget that really there's so many carbs in vegetables, right? It's the kind of carbs that you're having. I think... Yeah, you gotta have, you gotta have, it's gotta come from somewhere. Those calories, yes. they have to come from somewhere. You need carbs. You need to have fat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So do you, you subscribe? Don't need sugar. Do, you, do you subscribe to any of those popular diets like keto or whatever, a million other, you know what I mean? Or are you just saying, like, look, we just need to lower our carbs and have, and, and stay away from sugar, processed food. And then as long as you're eating clean, we're good. That's, that's more of me, man. I'm more of a guideline kind of guy, you know, and, and, and I, re but I respect, uh, the keto stuff. I respect, you know, all the diets that are out there. Um, and if it works for, for, for someone, awesome. Do it. But my thing is like, I'm trying to think long-term, you know what I mean? And for me, anytime I, I hear, I hear of a, of a diet that just tells me that it's not, it's not long-term, you know what I mean? And, and so yeah. I want to think big picture. I want to think, you know, can I, is this something that I can continue to do for the next 20 years, th whatever it is, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and if it's not, if it's not something I feel like I can sustain, then mm -hmm. I'm probably going to go in a different direction or I'm just going to go back to, you know, what I, what I know, but that's just me. I, you know, not everybody, I'm a bush. I'm a weirdo, dude. I'm a, I'm a weird dude. And I've got a lot of, a lot of like weird habits and stuff like that. So I understand that about myself and I know that not everybody is like me. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, uh, everybody's, we all got weird habits, right? Yeah. Just, uh, we're, we all learn. You got to do that. Well, here, I, we kind of went down this hole, so I'll just stick with it. And I know that you got to get to work. We're at uh, been for a while, but let's say that let's finish this up. If we're since we kind of more talked about diet today, which is part of your gym and part of who who you are, is is feeding the monster so that you can work out and you have energy all day, so that you can be on the news, that you can teach at the gym and renovate your your business and take care of your son. It, it takes a lot of energy, and you and. I can tell that you've got it. If anything else, if anybody even just didn't listen to anything that we said, I think they can tell your energy and passion, which is awesome. I mean, that is, is I wish I did that. Like, it, it just leads through you, which is awesome. That makes me want to go be around you, which is the point, right? Like that's why you're the leader of a gym. So sure. clearly it's working. So we, so I, you have a food journal, you have a 90, 10 rule, you're going to set goals. Um, what am I missing here? If I was, if we're just going to keep this on a diet here and this will be part one, I'm sure, cause we need to hit some more stuff about your gym and about working out and some other things, but let's, let's just finish this up on this. What else should they do? What, 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 what is your, what would you suggest? Somebody comes into your gym. They're like, look, man, I want to get in shape. Working out is part of it. But you're like, look, I need you to have the energy to work out. I need you to have the energy to, to be here and be who you are and be a new person. Um, what, what are you going to tell them to do? What are you going to start them out with? Well, you know, 
it's it's that's kind of hard because I would want to know more about them and know know what makes them tick. You know what that's I mean? Like, too. no, that's good information. I like that. And, yeah. And and I really need to. I need to like. I need a chance to kind of study the person to see how they handle certain things and how you know what what they respond well to because not everybody you know is going to respond well to, to to the same thing. You know what I mean? So yes, um, yeah. I think that's number one. But I also would say, listen, don't don't try to go too hard too fast. You know what I mean? Set 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 goals absolutely, but mm. set some long term goals and put them way up there. Put these long term goals all the way up at the top, all right? Mm -hmm. um, but also understand that those long-term goals are not going to happen if you don't have smaller short-term goals um, that lead up to it. So, you know, for me, I would, I would try to figure out what a person's about, what, you know, what's, and then let's make some realistic goals. Let's make one small <laughs> little goal that's easy to accomplish to get let's it started. Say that, that I came and I said, I want to lose 100 pounds. That's your long-term goal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say, let's, let's do it. Let's let, that's huge. When do you want to have it done by? When, you gotta yeah. say a date. I'd say give me a date. Letter. When yeah. do you want that hundred pounds gone by? Well, now we by, can break that into smaller goals, right? You want to buy November first of two thousand twenty? Well, I'm gonna be real with you, okay? You're not gonna lose hundred pounds in a month and five days. Yeah. All right. I don't care how hard you work. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't care if you come to grind time five times a day. All right. And if you and if you eat nothing unhealthy for the next, you know, thirty six days, you're not yeah. gonna get. There. But what you can do is you can set a goal of, of losing 100 pounds, maybe we'll say November 1st of 2021. All right, that gives you a year. That's still a huge goal, all yeah. right? But guess what? Just by saying that isn't going to do it. So now I want, I want to help you uh, formulate a plan. How are we going to reach that goal, all right? And we're going to reach that goal by, all right, we're going to start drinking more water, all right? That's pretty easy, right? Can you drink more water in a day? Okay, all right, well, let's start with that. All right, now, then we're gonna go, we're gonna go and have, uh, the weather's nice outside. We're gonna, we're gonna go out and walk. And uh, we're gonna walk some, some flats for two or, two or three times a, a week. And then when that gets to be a little bit easier, then I'm gonna have you throw in some hills. All right, then we're gonna do a little bit of, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do some weights, but we're not gonna go crazy with it. We're just gonna kind of work on form and technique and, and get that muscle memory right. All right, and then we're gonna try and up those a little bit. So by November 1st of 2020, um, with some of these mild changes that we've made, uh, not going too hard because I don't want to burn you out on it in a month. Um, maybe we can, you know, I think 10 pounds is realistic by November 1st of 2020. That's 10% of your goal. Now you've got 12 more months to, to get that other 90 pounds off. And how we do that is then we reset our goals. We set our, a new set of goals there. And, you know, when you get a little bit of confidence, you have a little success, you get a little confidence, right? And once yeah. you get a little bit of confidence, now we got to fight against complacency. And I'm a huge, that's, I'm talking to myself right here. I tend to, when I start to get a little success in something, I have in the past grown complacent and I've stopped doing all the things that uh, it took me to get to that point for being successful. So I know this about myself. So now I got to fight against that. All right. And how do I fight against that? Now I set these new goals and I again tell myself that these new goals aren't just going to happen on their own. How are we going to accomplish these new goals and where do we go from here? And so I feel like once you get that ball kind of rolling, um, it's, it's easier to keep it going, but you also have to fight against complacency. Uh, no, that's all. Awesome. Did that answer your question? I just kind of rambled on and on. I'm not sure if I answered your question <laughs> or not. No, you did perfect. Because cause even I'm, just, I'm taking mental notes while you're talking. I'm thinking that you, I even liked how you said you lost 10 pounds. That's 10% of your goal. You know, because that's adding in positive reinforcement along. Yeah. I mean, maybe they don't realize it, but you're like, you just lost 10%. That sounds huge, right? But if somebody just said you lost 10 pounds, you got 90 to go. Yeah, that's a little deflating sometimes, right? It's all on how you put the same information. It's the same thing. So I like that. I mean, it's, you know. I would, and I would also add along with that, okay, you lost 10 pounds in this first month. Now, I don't want you to think, sit here and think that you're just going to lose 10 pounds every single month. And I don't want you to get discouraged if in the month of November, we come back here on December 1st, you haven't lost 20 pounds and you're not 20% mm -hmm. to your goal because, you know, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen, all right? I don't want you to get down on yourself because what that's going to do is that's going to, that's negative energy. And that's going to maybe frustrate you and you might take a step back and you might throw your hands up and say, well, what, what the heck? I've been doing so well this whole month. I want you to understand and realize that this is a process, that there are going to be ups and there are going to be downs. All right. But the, the whole point here is that while we're going up and we might take a step down here, but eventually we're going to go back up and we're going to be a little bit higher than we were. Even though we might drop down a little bit here, at the end of the day, we're going to keep making this upward trend. Even, where are you today um, in regards to where you were, you know, two months ago? 
are you going in the right direction? If you're going in the right direction, dude, look, all right. You might not have – nothing nothing, nothing worthwhile comes like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's going to take a little while to reach those goals. And if it doesn't take a while, guess what? You didn't set your goals high enough. Yes. Well, and nothing worth having is not going through a struggle. I, I, I butchered that. You probably do better than me, right? Is that- dude, like if it's worth – if you know, listen, I'll say, I'll say this. Uh, my man back in the day said, I don't want it if it's that easy. You know what I'm yes. talking about? Two bucks, you know? Yeah. I don't want it if it's that easy. Make me work yeah. for it a little bit. You know what I mean? And that's honestly, that's, that's a big part of what, what, what my gym grind time is all about. The mm-hmm. grind is about work, man. I want to work. I want to work. I don't want a magic pill. I don't want that crap, man. Because there's, there's no satisfaction in that. You know what I mean? I want the satisfaction and the gratification of knowing that I earned it. Whatever it is. I don't want it handed to me. You yeah. know? And I think that a lot of times now, nowadays, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people, 2020 things, sometimes technology makes things come easy or, you know, people talk about kids nowadays that are this, they're that, you know, I don't want to rag on kids today because it's not their yeah. fault where, where, where they're born, but like, you know, certain things just come easy to certain people. I, I don't want it easy. I want to know that I earned it. I want to know that I work for it. You know what I mean? They do. No, that's very powerful. I, here's, here's the thing. We, I like everything you said. I love people like you. So, John, I mean, like we've been friends, like you said, since probably 2000, 2004. We don't know. So we're in the region. But I will just, just as, as a friend, I guess we've, we've never really been able to sit and talk for a half hour. Um, I've enjoyed this. Yeah, I, I think the world needs more people like you because you motivate me. I think we can motivate each other. I think people need to hear. I don't, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people know who you are, but I don't think people know this side of you. I think this is important. Because this is, this is really who you are. This is why you have a gym. This is why you're so passionate. This is why you took your passion and made what, the, what you have. And I want to see you succeed. I want, I want your, your passion and, and what's oozing out of the screen and out of, of our, our, our talking to translate to other people and translate to, to just really. Like it, we have a gym, and, and the, the point of having the gym stay open is to be financially successful. However, I think I get the same feeling from you that I have for me is that, yeah, we need that. But my main thing is that if I make a difference in the world when all is said and done, then I'm, I'm successful. Um, and I, I get that from you. And I really love that, to be honest. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know what I mean? Like I, I, the, the, my, my least favorite part of the whole gym thing, all right, and I've said this to people before, I can't stand, I hate having to deal with the money. You know what I mean? Because if, if, if it was up to me, all right, if I had it my way, Nobody would pay a dollar to come in here and work out, all right? We would just be about giving back and helping people better their lives and the more the merrier and don't worry about money, this and that. Unfortunately, I don't have, I don't have a lot of money to, to, to throw around like that. I don't have a ton of money. So I need to have the money to, to pay the bills to be able to help those people, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I never want anybody feeling, but at the same, I'll be honest with you, man. Like if there's somebody who came in and they said, we need your help, I need your help, but here's the deal. I don't have, I don't have the money for it. I don't have, I, or am I just going to turn that person away? I can't yeah. do that. All right. I, I don't want to be taken advantage of. All right. And I'm going to be and, and if I feel like I'm being taken advantage of, I'll, I'll stop it. But like, I want to help that person. You know what I mean? I'm not going to turn that person away. What kind of message does that send? And if anybody has, if anybody that does come to my gym would have a problem with that, I don't think that maybe, maybe they're not the right fit for, for my gym because I, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to help people. You know what I mean? I could not agree yeah. with you more. Um, on that, on that whole thing, Butch, because it is at the end of the day, it's about helping people, man. There's no, there's no better feeling, you know. There's not, no. Well, really, I, when you see that light bulb, you see the light switch go off in somebody's head, and and it, and you see that you've made a positive uh, change in their life, and then guess what that person does? That person goes out. Now they're feeling better about themselves, and they're gonna go out. And they're gonna start talking to this person, and this person, and this person, and you never know how many people they're gonna affect yeah. with with that with that positivity. And, you know, you don't even know all the people that that person may have gone out and touched and affected, but you had a part in that as well. You know what I mean? So I just feel like um, that's what it's all about. You know, I don't care about my, I don't care about material stuff. I, I'm wearing this shirt. I've had this shirt for probably 10 years. I don't care. Yeah. It's whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I wear the same pair of, pair of shorts and pair of pants, like literally to work every single day. I just don't care. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Your priorities are different. When your priorities are different, the things that matter are helping people getting better yourself. That's another thing, right? Because as, as more you get better, or the more that you improve, the more that you're gonna help others improve. Um, no, yeah, it, let's feed off each other. You know, like I love, I love talking to you because you're motivating me. 
And I would, I, I, hopefully I can motivate you, but let's, let's better each Absolutely. other. Let's find a way to all bring each other up. There's too much negativity in the world with everybody trying to bring others down, thinking that it's going to make them feel better about themselves. Mm-hmm. But you know what, dude, like my kid, I was talking about my kid. He's a, he's a first grader now. Last year and the year before kindergarten, right? They talk about filling buckets. Be a bucket filler. Don't be a bucket dipper. Well, what's a bucket mm-hmm. dipper? A bucket yeah. dipper is somebody who goes around and they think that if they take from your bucket, all right, they, they, they pour a little bit out of your bucket, all right, that, that's going into their bucket and they're going to feel better about themselves, about whatever's bothering them, right? Well, they don't realize that dipping from somebody's bucket doesn't make you feel better about yourself. In fact, dipping from their bucket, all right, is going to make you, it's dipping from your bucket too, all right? But when you mm-hmm. fill somebody's bucket, you go over and you say something, say something nice to somebody. Give somebody a compliment, a genuine compliment, and you dip from their, and you, and you add to their bucket, you also add to your own bucket, man. So why can't we all be bucket fillers and not bucket dippers? Yeah. Well, we can I'll all learn you. a lot from a kindergarten. Yeah, no, that you know? it is actually very profound, isn't it? Um, Crazy. Yeah, no, and really on that note, I think that's where we should end. Let's end on such a positive note, man. That's awesome. Let's, let's do this, man. You killed it. Um, I want to work out with you right now. That's how good. Let's go. So where, where can everybody find you? And how can they find your gym? We are literally right across the street from WCHS TV. We're about four or five blocks from Lady Field. You can see our building from the interstate on, um, on uh, I-64 and 77, uh, like right off the Leon Sullivan exit, um, 1500 Hansford Street, uh, 25311. Or you can just find us on Facebook and email me or, or, or hit me with a DM on, on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and we can go from there. I'd, I'd love to have anybody come in, man, and – and we're doing stuff online now too. So we're trying to branch out a little bit there just because we have to do what we got to do. And, and, uh, you know, to, to pay, to pay those bills and to hopefully stay open to be able to help some more people here. Um, as the years go on, which I really appreciate the forum to talk like this. I don't get a chance to talk like this very often. And I don't see, I don't want to just put this stuff out there on my own because then it looks like, Oh, look at me, look at me talk about, look at me try to talk about this. And, you know, I don't want to be that guy. So I don't, I don't oftentimes get a chance to, to, to bring it like this. So to be able to do this with you, man, it was, was awesome. I appreciate it. No, and I, I think, I, and I've said it a bunch of times, I mean, honestly, your, your personality and your enthusiasm kind of shone through, even for me, and I've known you for, for like you said, two decades now. Um, and this is, this, this is important. It's super important. What you're doing is super important. You're super important. You're important for Charleston. Um, so I, I'd tell everybody, man, they need, they need to go visit you, need to work out. We're, just like you said, we're going to feed off each other. We're all going to make each other better. This is the thing we're going to do. Um, it starts here. It starts now. Everything you said, I mean, I'm just envisioning half these things that you said, just breaking them up and playing on my Instagram or something, because you, you did a great job, man. I really appreciate it. Coach, man, listen, thank, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And, you know, uh, if there's ever anything I can do to help you out, um, you, just, you just say the word, man. Like I said, I want to I wanna help, you know, make you better, just like you want to help make me better, man. So I, I really appreciate it. And if there's any of your people that – that, uh, that you think I could ever, uh, I could ever help, uh, I, you know, please encourage them. You know, sometimes people think that the whole TV thing, mm-hmm. they think that that works for me all the time. But honestly, I think it works against me. Um, and I think that, yeah. you know, sometimes people are, are kind of apprehensive to, to reach out to people who are the TV people and whatnot because they have these preconceived notions about them being this or they're that or they're, you know, they're stuck up or they're, you know, it's not, no, it's, not, it's not the yeah. case. So, so sometimes it works against me. You know what I mean? So, so thank you. It does. Yeah, no. And it, this is the first, I mean, we, we talked for a good 40 minutes an hour. And I think just, just for me as a friend, nothing came through, but act, absolute genuine enthusiasm and passion that I'm telling you, like I can see, this is not, this is not an act. This is you pouring your heart out saying, this is what I like to do. This is what I want to do. And if I was going to go and find a trainer, it would be somebody that's that passionate, not somebody that's, that's getting a paycheck because they signed up at a, a facility and they're getting paid by the hour by the, the, the client, right? Like this is, you've done it, right? Like you motivated me to go run through a brick wall right now. So you're good. Well, I gotta go back to work right now, but I'll be done at about 11.45. If you wanna run, run through a brick wall with me at midnight, I'll, I'll do it with you, let's go. We should probably do it. <laughs> let's go, let's, hey, I got, the, I, I got the key to the gym downstairs. If you wanna come work out at midnight, let's, let's rock and roll, Butch, let's do it. Well, I think we're going to start taking you up on that, man. You kicked some butt, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for everything. Hey, thank you, man. We'll talk, we'll, let's talk soon, okay? Okay. All right. Good All luck. Right. Thank Good you, night. sir. Have a great night. We'll right. see you. See you, man. Bye-bye. Thanks, buddy.